Uh, delegates, uh, I want to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather, the Wurundjeri people, the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. I'd also like to thank those who have served on the FEA policy and party committees over the last year and a bit. Your efforts continue to play a vital role for the Labor Movement. Thank you for your service. It is greatly appreciated and makes an enormous difference to how this party runs. And for those of you who are stepping down in your roles, thank you for your hard work during a particularly challenging time of the party. And this specifically includes uh, President uh, Trevor Dobbin, who is not really contesting his position. Uh, thank you very much, Trevor, for all of your hard work. I'd also like to ask for a round of applause for all of the staff and the volunteers who have assisted with today. It's an enormous effort and they've worked very, very hard for it. I'd finally also like to thank the media for attending today. Unlike the Greens National Conference, you are absolutely welcome to our wonderful state conference. Uh, we are open and to that scrutiny and we welcome it and we certainly hope the Greens do in November at their national conference. Delegates, I speak today about the one constant in the narrative of the Australian Labor Party, and that's change. The Victorian ALP is featured heavily in this national narrative and it will continue to do so. We've manifested change in two distinct ways, and I think it's worth a bit of discussion here today. The first is structural reform. Rule changes around ballot processes and membership rights. That's something we have done, I would argue, quite consistently. In fact, on my count, we, if you average it out, we've had a review that's been pretty thorough in a particular area once every three years for the past 15 years. No Victorian branch has that record of introspection and then reaction and action. Uh, but there is a second type of change that I would argue is just as important, if not more so, especially at this part of the cycle. The second type of change I'd like to talk to is the proactive positive agenda, otherwise known by George Bush Senior as the vision thing. I prefer to refer to it as cultural change, just for the purposes of actually describing it. It's been led by our parliamentary leader in Daniel Andrews. I certainly commend everything that he said today, and he's a great example for us all to follow in this regard. But we all know that this cultural change is driven by more than just one in the party, it's driven by us all. And this cultural change depends on our delegates and our membership. It depends on the people who are the heart and soul of Labor speaking up. It depends on them rolling up their sleeves and getting involved. And delegates, our party's democratic structure is utterly dependent upon the initiative and determination of party members. It is not constructed in a room somewhere by Vulcan-like geniuses wearing black turtleneck jumpers. It is very much about individuals having an initiative and a fierce determination to drive through their ideas and willing to engage and contest a political argument. Already we're starting to hear their voices emerge as a whisper. Our task is to ensure within the next three years it emerges as a roar. It is the work done in policy committee reports. It is the ideas and the emergency resolutions that emerge on the conference floor that we've seen today. It is the debate and discussion in inter-party forums, like Lean and Rainbow Labor. Not all ideas succeed, and not everyone gets exactly what they want, but that is the nature of the political contest of ideas, and I believe it will always be the best way, and certainly been the history of this party. It's hard to find that momentum, however, after two very grueling campaigns, as we ended last year. Once, one we were successful, the other we were not. But as I look around, I see a number of new delegates. For many, it will be their first conference, certainly in terms of the FEA delegates. You are welcome here, and I'm speaking specifically to you in this instance. I implore you to make your contribution where you can, assuming you haven't already. And there are a few that have jumped up very quickly, and Simon Miller's a good example of that. I note that there has been very civilised discussion today on, on a standard sort of level. The only exception to that has been Steve Michelson parading around in a Geelong Cats uh, scarf. But generally speaking, I think it's a good uh, reflection of the tone of this party. We're serious about moving forward. No comments about Collingwood. I, I, I'd like to indulge myself and we'll skip on to the next part. The point being, it's serious. Everyone is focused on the job and we need to get on with it. Time and again, it's people like you who have made the difference. And in the last period of state opposition, in the early 1990s, a new generation emerged agitating for new approaches, and they help revitalise the party. Some of the more familiar names include Kim Carr, Julia Gillard, Tim Holling, Bill Shorten, and David Feeney, to name a few. The names are not important, but what it says is, this is a part of the cycle that new leadership begins to emerge in a number of different areas. They were determined as a part of a new generation of individuals, and fiercely determined to make a difference. And I'm starting to see them emerge already, as are other members of the party. Their determination, shared by thousands of party members over the last hundred years, is what keeps our party strong. And already, 
that determination is starting to emerge again in new faces. If history is any guide throughout the world, the political party's future depends on its ideas it can offer. Its strength as a movement, and in elections depends on policy, people, and the symbolic alternatives that it provides. I'm confident the Australian Labor Party can meet those demands, and I believe our party is unrivaled in its ability to respond to this change. As generations before I've done, we will double our efforts, redouble our efforts, and renew our focus. We have been in these hard times before. You know you face those times when you start to see the same old prophecies appearing. Again, we hear the shock jocks and other re unreconstructed Neanderthals emerging from the woodwork, salivating over themselves about the death of the Labor Party. I, would, I actually in, embrace these prophecies with relish. They're delivered by people ignorant of our party, people who have never understood our mission, and people who are often motivated because they actually despise what we are about. Delegates, it's said you should never argue with an idiot as they will simply drag you down to their level in the gutter and beat you with experience. I reject this notion. We have to argue with the idiots who thrive on a simple soundbite. We cannot allow the simplistic attacks and self-important moralising to go unchecked. Victoria deserves better. And on that, I commend our Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, for occasionally having a pretty decent bout with Alan Jones. Whereas many before her, not in terms of Labor people, but other spokespersons within the community have been too afraid to do so. Oh. It's up to each one of us to stand up and hold these Muppet-like shock jocks to account. We are in the business of contesting political ideas, and we must not shrink from this fact. It is the lifeblood of this party, and you can see it already within this room, there's more than enough people who are ready to take up the fight. And it means we must argue, convince, and carry people with us that would otherwise not join the journey. And by definition, that means we must change how we do things, but not why. And the why has not changed. We fight for the people who continue to depend upon us. The worker with little choice over their job security. Families battling increased financial stress and parents who want the best education for their kids. Those sick, infirm or elderly who rely on the health care that the Labor Party always ensures, always ensures is provided. If Labor is not there for them, then no one is. That is and always has been our mission. And how we go about ensuring our parties in the best shape to continue protecting them is the means through which we will determine our success.